Welcome to a special episode of Monster Hunter Rise. I've been playing this game for a number of hours <laughs> and I was, I, I thought I'd talk about it. I don't know if first impressions is quite the right title for what this is going to be, but I ramble on about a game I've been playing recently. It just doesn't have the clickability <laughs> of first impressions. So <laughs> that's what I'm going with. Also, so you know where I'm coming from, I've this is the second Monster Hunter game I've ever played. The first was Monster Hunter World, so these are the only two that I have that I have any experience with, so that's where I'll be coming from when I talk about it. There'll be a lot of comparing and contrasting between the two games because I have like hundreds of hours of <laughs> gameplay in Monster Hunter World, so <laughs> it's just my baseline, I guess. <laughs> So I think maybe what I'll do will be, I have like a thing I've been taking notes on. I think I'll go through the pros and the cons and then just various other notes towards the end. So one of the first things that I like that has changed from world is the eating is more uh, streamlined. Um, <laughs> in world, you had to do something like a certain number of certain ingredients and try to get the ones with the stars and then maybe you'll get uh, <laughs> the thing you want but here you know we get to choose the ingredients we want and then it has it shows the chance of activation and it just makes more sense and the usual like being able to set up things is just so much easier than it was in world <laughs> Yay! the uh, and the little video is very cute but it doesn't make me want food nearly as much as the one world. The number of times I've eaten something just because it looked good in world is impressive. Another thing that I'm really happy about is that some of the stuff that showed up at the end of world is just here by default. So like having something to ride around in uh, quests, like at the very end they gave us, you could call a creature from the area and then just ride. But now we have our lovely little dog companion here and they also included the flinching you could do to monsters though it's like expanded on but less satisfying there was something about getting a good flinch that was nice in world but getting a ride around a creature is also a lot of fun <laughs> another thing that i really have been appreciating <laughs> in this one is how conveniently placed everything is so like here's where you get your weapons and armor over here's where you can change your uh equipment there's the shop there's the quests for the village and then you can also go in here and you can um see your house cat this little guy here and he lets you access all kinds of stuff um that are across the map you can conveniently do it here as well and then when you go into the guild everything is here so there's like you can eat here there's where you get your equipment here's where you get quests and then uh also a store right there uh this this little one here is the store and then if you just go up into this area you can craft all of your equipment you can also access the housekeeper who access all of these things so everything you need is always not far, which is really nice because there were times in World where you'd have to run all the way across the map, go up these lifts, across a bridge to then get food, and you started your quest at the bottom of the map. And <laughs> So I'm glad everything's all in one spot now. You can also customize quite a bit. For example, in here in the room, you could change the background music for like four different areas. So pretty much anywhere when you're not in a quest, you could change the music of, which I think is really cool. You can also, is it here? Uh, you could change your uh, appearance at any time. Thank God. So you could change like your hair and stuff. You can't change like your voice and that kind of stuff, but you can at least change your hair whenever you want or the colors. You can also equipment display. So you could choose what you want to be showing in your armor. So if you don't like your helmet, like this one, which I think is cute, but I like having my own hair. Um, then you could just hide it. And you can also do that with your pets, your pals, companions. For example, you could go here and then equipment display. And like on Hawk, I could take off his helmet so we could see his little face again. 
which is awesome. I know a lot of games do the helmet thing, but I haven't seen one where you can literally choose any piece of your equipment and make it not show. So something else that is a little different on this one is now we have voice lines, which is, is fun, but when they often make a comment for everything they harvest, for everything they do, <laughs> it gets old. So they give us the option in here under audio. So you could change how often your person talks. So I have that on 50 most times. I kept it at 100 for a while, but then it was like, I get it. It's a plant. <laughs> You're harvesting it. So you could turn that down. And then you can also change whether or not you can hear other people's characters talking when you're out on like a multi, like a co-op quest, which would be useful. I keep theirs on because they do things like tell you when you're about to get attacked or when the creature's about to do something especially aggressive, they'll shout out. And I think it's kind of fun. Like if you guys get some distance between you, when they talk, there's like an echo. So you could kind of tell that they're further away or further ahead. And so I think that adds a bit more, it makes them feel like they're all in the same area opposed to world where you're like, they've just kind of exist, but you don't really feel like you're in the same area kind of a deal. Like they're just there and then they're gone and it doesn't matter. But this one, when you show up, they'll thank you for, you know, uh, coming to help. And then they'll, you know, warn you about stuff. You can hear them in the distance, even if you can't see them. And I think it's all just nice touches to make them all feel like in their, in the same area, I guess. <laughs> So something that I really appreciate when it comes to uh, crafting stuff. One, you can roll back, but I'm pretty sure you could do that before. But the other thing that I really appreciate is some weapons and armor and stuff, I think. Well, I don't know about armors, but weapons, when you go to upgrade it, it lets you select some of the materials you craft it with. So you can use materials you have a, a lot of instead of having to be exactly what it requires. It's really nice to be able to just take some a couple of things like this and get rid of stuff you have a lot of and craft your gun opposed to being like you need this one type of scale that you can only get if you capture the creature and there's luck involved <laughs> it's just nice to be able to use up old materials i also appreciate that the villagers have like personality they have things to say when it comes to what's going on in the story and they also like have relationships like this kid has a crush on this one over here and they have, you know, there's a um, a guy, I think you've seen him, there he is, like him carrying stuff. He'll talk about this kid and then like there's the different merchants and they'll talk about each other or where their ingredients are going. So it's actually really nice to for them to feel like people you'd know because you've grown up here. So you would know a lot of these people so that the fact that they can talk to you about like personal things that are going on in their life and stuff feels really good. That said, I mean, I did enjoy that in World, you just called people by like their title. I like the idea that your character was so bad at remembering names that they're just like, yeah, that's that's the cook. <laughs> they just gave them titles that they could remember and that's what they stuck with. So I didn't hate it before, but I do think it's a lot of fun going around and talking to everybody after every quest. Like I can have a favorite villager, I guess, uh, which is her. I like her a lot. I think she's cool. It's sad because she uh, she's in, she was a hunter. She's been injured. And so she's like a lot of what she talks about is dealing with the fact that she can't do what she's really passionate for because of something that happened. And now she has an injury and how she's dealing with that. So... Yes, I love that everybody has personalities now. <laughs> Another thing that I've uh, really been enjoying is the wire bugs. They're just so much fun for navigating stuff and it's so satisfying to finally get up to where you've been trying to go. Like, isn't that awesome? And you just, everything about you looks so cool. You do all these cool flips. Even when you fall, you look cool. The one point I have is that there are certain heights where you can't crawl up and but feel stupid to go to use a wire bug for. Like you used to be able to sprint and like crawl up certain heights like that one you can get. But if it's just a little higher, you can't crawl up it and you have to use a wire bug. I'm like, this feels like a waste of my wire bugs. <laughs> Obviously, another thing that's really nice about this one is the companions. They actually help you out in fights. Um, you can only take one out when you go co-op, but it's nice that, that they're still there because in World they would just... you'd be alone. But um, 
It's nice getting all these guys. At first I wasn't sure why I would want any other pals besides the two that I created. Like, I, w I wasn't about to switch out who traveled with me on quests and stuff. But, um... So you can send the, your little pals out to go collect uh, materials for you, kind of like the tree in Monster Hunter World. Um, but you would you get to recruit these guys and then send them out and then there's the mercenaries which I think you had in World but before it would take uh, palicos from people you've encountered and people who you're friends with and stuff and send them but now you get to choose by like hiring these little guys and training them which you could see is happening here and eventually you'll have um, you can send out four at a time and I think you can have like three missions by the end so there's actually a lot of uh, palicos and palamutes that you could have with you. So it does actually make sense to recruit them, especially because one of the quests is like, recruit 50 of them. It's like, oh my god, that's a lot. But it you actually do put most of them to use, which is nice. Another thing that's really convenient is you can now fast travel everywhere. And they'll, when you arrive, sometimes they'll say someone wants to talk to you. It shows where that person is and you can just fast travel to them. Very convenient. Something I enjoy is that whenever you fight the creature for the first time through the village quests, you get these little videos about them and... Am I about to fight a giant dick? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> look, look at that, look at that face! Ew! <laughs> Why does the gun you get from the materials from that creature look like Frankenstein monsters private bits with teeth <laughs> and so gross <laughs> hate it <laughs> my favorite part about that hideous creature is they clearly know <laughs> what it looks like if you go to fight it the first time uh in the description it literally says a pale a wrinkly veiny pale creature with no face that looks like a and then they leave it blank Ugh. See, they definitely know what they're doing with that. It's like, look at that attack. <laughs> oh no. Oh my god, it got grosser. I've never seen it do that before. Oh my god, stop that. I didn't think I could hate it anymore. Look at its stupid tail. <laughs> I mean, you can carve flabby hide <laughs> and pill extract from these guys. So I'm glad they had a lot of fun with that creature. <laughs> but with that random side note out of the way, let's get back to the rest of the video. Now on to some of the more negative things. For one, the graphics aren't as good. Like that, beautiful. Next to it, a blob. <laughs> um, and if you get up high, which you're gonna do a lot with the wire bugs, you can see like repeating textures all over the place and a lot of the worlds feel a little less full. Like there's less plants cluttering and everything. But honestly, you don't notice it when you're in like hunts and stuff and like going around the village looks fine. I would rather it run well on the Switch than look as nice as it does when it was on the PlayStation or the PC. But it is hard knowing that world looks so beautiful and this sometimes this one's like, ooh, that's just, that's just not nice. But, you know, you just have to remind yourself that that's what's making your game run as well it does. I've only had it crash once uh, in the time that I've been playing, so that's preferred, I suppose. <laughs> Another complaint I have is the map moves backwards <laughs> so i think what it is is most games what would happen would be the map is stationary and you direct the camera above it but i think in this one what you're technically doing is moving the map under a stationary camera and oh my god is it hard to control <laughs> like i need to go check this area and you're like oh oh, oh no the other way oh nope uh no there we go <laughs> Like, such a pain, and I do not know why it is so backwards. <laughs> it's fun looking back at some of the complaints I had when I first started playing. One of them was I kept accidentally getting on my dog because uh, in World I would hold to mine, but now if you hold that button, you get on your dog. So there was a lot of times where I'm like, okay, I'm going to go harvest this, and I'd get on the dog and be like, dang it, that's not what I wanted. Ooh, I don't want to fall. Oh, 
Um, another comp thing that I had to get used to that I was used to from World is I used to use Sprint to put my gun away, but that doesn't work anymore. Uh, you have to specifically hit a button to do it, um, which kind of sucks because uh, I was in one heck of a habit to use the Sprint. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I need to heal I'm trying to hit the button to uh, Sprint to put the gun away and it just doesn't happen. I'm like, I'm gonna die! <laughs> but I think I've gotten used to it now. Now some complaints back in town. One of them is how the quests boards work. So uh, now you just select the quest you want to try to do with somebody else. Um, I kind of miss the original uh, way it was set up in World where it would show like the individual quests and how much time they've been in them and how many people are a part of it. Um, my biggest complaint, I suppose, is the fact that when you want to go onto a co-op quest, you instantly travel when you choose one. So if I was to pick this, it would find one and just instantly go, whereas I can't prepare before. And as someone who has, like, a loadout for every creature, <laughs> um, it's kind of annoying. Because I used to just look through a list, see if someone needs help, go get the, like, accept it, go get the proper armor and stuff on, and then travel. But now I need to kind of know that all ahead of time. So I kind of miss getting to choose that myself. Something I really miss when it comes to forging armor is being able to see the full armor set stats. Um, at least easily. Is it under a skill? No. Like, I keep looking for it, but you can see the individual items stats, but you can't see, like, you can see the equipment, but the thing I want to know is, like, how much total resistances and defenses I'm going to get from each armor. I know I can, they all have the same, so you just, you have to add it up, but it was just nice seeing the whole thing, and it took me an age to find out where you could see the total stats for the equipment you're wearing now. It used to be really easy to see, but now you have to go under uh, manage this, and then you have to tab over a couple, like, over to four out of six, and this is where you can see, like, your total defenses and resistances and stuff. I just feel like that was easier to find before. Another thing that's kind of annoying is some of the armors seem like the materials they take are from areas where you can get better armors. So, for example, like this one takes like a material that's hard to get, but by the time you get the stuff for it, it's going to be so useless <laughs> with its defense. Um, and then there was some... I can't remember which set it was, but it required like materials like, um, uh, I think it was a ore of type. Um, it takes an ore from an area that once you get to that area, there's going to be a whole bunch of monsters with better armor. So by the time you can make the armor you want, it's going to be useless. Um, so that's something I've been trying to figure out. <laughs> Another nitpicky one um, is I don't like the quest card or uh, the guild cards as much. Like, this is fine. But it's not nearly as cool as what you could make your um, guild card in World. Like, I really enjoyed looking at everyone else's and spending time on making mine look nice. But this one is just kind of boring. <laughs> I have one last kind of nitpicky complaint. Um, there's a lot I'm willing to put up with in this game and accept it. Like, yeah, sure, that makes sense. One of them is not this. What? What is this? <laughs> How does this work? <laughs> Every time I uh, I have to do that, I'm just like, why? How is this working? <laughs> and then I think my one of my biggest complaints is I accidentally messed up the quest line for myself. <laughs> I kind of assumed that the star ratings between the quests that you do on your own and the quests you do with uh, other players, the rating would be similar. So get through all these real quick. So I assumed that level two star here and there would be kind of the same and so I was trying to kind of balance them out but really what you should be doing is playing a lot of the village quests before going and doing them in the guild because I ended up fighting what is kind of the oh I got I got an award for something. Um, so I ended up fighting what's kind of the boss of the quote-unquote main quest that a lot of people are calling it. I see it as like the first part of the quest, but for some people it plays the 
credits after you beat that boss. It didn't for me, I think probably because I joined instead of starting the quest myself. Anyway, I ended up doing that well before I even knew why I was fighting it. I knew I had done something significant by beating it because when I came back there was a bunch of quests and your rewards and everyone wanted to talk and all of these things. So it seemed like a big deal but I didn't know why and it's because I hadn't played through enough quests of the village to get the story on why it was important to take down that creature. So now it's very strange having beaten it already going through the quest line <laughs> like oh no here this thing's a problem and I'm like Oh, I mean, it's not anymore. I've already killed it, but we'll pretend I didn't already. So if you're just starting out, what I would recommend is anytime you want to fight a creature in a co-op in like the guild, do the village version of it first. It gives you a nice video about it. And then it kind of gives you a little bit of time to fight it to see what its moveset is. They'll be very easy. I kind of assumed since they were going to be solo, they'd be hard to fight, especially because I have a light bow gun. I don't do a whole lot of damage on my own. But they're really easy, like they're, they have very little health. You gotta like move between two arenas and then you can capture it and that's about it. So definitely work through the village quests before the guild quests. <laughs> so that looks like most of the stuff I have written down. I've kind of covered it, but one thing that's kind of neutral is that the quests are now separated differently with ones you gotta do solo versus ones that you do with other players. Um, so I wanted to cover two potential secrets that you may not have found quite yet. One is to go here for secrets. Another is to go here. You get uh, free loot after each quest, I think. It seems to be able to pile up for a little bit, so I just check it every once in a while. But yes, free stuff in this little nest. So yes, that is some of the things that I have been enjoying in the game so far and some of the things I've been feeling particularly nitpicky about. Um, have you guys been playing the game at all? What are the things that you've been enjoying and what have you disliked? I'm excited because even though I've had a lot of hours playing so far, uh, there's a lot I haven't gone into yet. I'm still in low rank uh, technically, so I'm curious about the new creatures I haven't fought, what I haven't unlocked yet, and all of that. So looking forward to playing it a whole lot more. <laughs> so I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode, and until next time, I hope you have a wonderful day.